How will Gutenberg change the future of WordPress? If you've ever used the WordPress blog, and chances are almost every single person on the planet has used one, one way or another, you probably know that there's something coming up in WordPress over the next month or two called Gutenberg. Gutenberg is pretty much a blog builder, which is going to replace the way existing posts and pages are being created in WordPress. Right now, if you head into WordPress and hit posts or pages in the dashboard, you come up to a specific form that has a title, the title of the post, a long, lengthy, what you see is what you get editor, potentially some other pieces, you know, under the, the post. And on the right, you have, you know, publish date, the publish button itself, and a bunch of other meta boxes. If you have specific plugins, of course, they are going to contribute with new meta boxes on that screen. So that's the usual user experience of WordPress and creating posts that have been around for the past decade or more. Now, some things are going to change here, and the most kind of uh, important bit is that uh, this interface itself is going to disappear. That lengthy, what you see is what you get box with the buttons that resemble the old versions of Microsoft Word is going to disappear very soon from WordPress. First off, don't worry. If you really like the existing experience, and to be honest, we do like the existing experience, we have clients which are going to stay on that experience for at least a year now, there's a classic editor plugin, which you can install very soon, and it will keep, kind of uh, retain the same logic which you've got right now for WordPress. So don't you worry, this is going to stay the same, uh, you know, for the foreseeable future. But every single user that upgrades to WordPress uh, 5.0, is going to inherit the new Gutenberg experience. Now, why is Gutenberg different? It resembles more or less the traditional visual builders that you know in the WordPress space, such as Visual Composer, Beaver Builder, Divi Builder, uh, Elementor, and a bunch of other plugins, which were aiming to design a specific experience uh, for creating more robust and more kind of editable pages. Now, in terms of writing blog posts, most people that I know prefer the traditional straightforward experience because it really uh, looks the, uh, like the way you would write content in Microsoft Word or Google Docs or something like that. You still have uh, kind of standard elements, you have titles, heading tags, normal tags, bullet points, probably images here and there, maybe embedding a video. But this is fairly, again, traditional. If you go to LinkedIn and publish content on LinkedIn, it's going to look in the kind of more or less the same way. If you go to Medium, it's going to be the same. But as you try to actually build an existing website by you know, building actual blocks, you know, putting a header, hero slider image on top or something like that, then a testimonials element, image on the top, title, um, I don't know, some bullet points, then call to action button, then embeddable video, probably three columns on the page, stuff that actual pages actually use. Now you can't really do that in WordPress by default with a, with a vanilla WordPress installation. Of course, you can buy a WordPress theme and this WordPress theme uh, will probably support some page templates which are going to let you do that. Or you can get another theme that has a uh, full width widgetable area, you know, also known as sidebar and you can probably add widgets right next to each other if your theme supports that. You can install one of those plugin builders and start editing content on the page, on the, you know, on the page itself. Or you can build a custom theme that kind of does this, but you also have specific meta boxes in the admin, which are you know, specific boxes with editable data, like subforms in the back end, which lets you do this. Or you can go to the front end and use a front end builder like Beaver Builder and just edit all of that on the front end if you have the corresponding components. Basically, you have a bunch of different options. And I've spoken about this on my podcast, WordPress for uh, Small and Medium Enterprises, which you can find pretty much everywhere, iTunes and Spotify and whatnot. But the uh, bottom line is you have a bunch of different options and all of them have their pros and cons. And the main uh, the main reason Gutenberg is so powerful is it's not going to replace the traditional ways you build dynamic interface right now. Now, Beaver Builder is already compatible with Gutenberg. Advanced Custom Fields is already compatible with Gutenberg. I believe that Divi Builder is probably on the way or maybe even ready. Uh, same goes for Elementor or some of the other plugins, maybe even Visual Composer. But the idea is that all of those plugins have introduced a ton of custom functionality that they had to come up with from scratch, built from scratch without being fully compatible with the WordPress core, which is essentially a very complicated endeavor. As a result, this code is not truly stable. Uh, it's pretty much hacking around the way WordPress creates content at the moment, 
And since WordPress doesn't assume that this is one of the ways content is being created, now all sorts of ongoing updates may happen, which are going to break changes in specific premium themes or visual builders. Moreover, there's no uh, traditional framework like a foundation, like a, a layer, which is going to let you build specific blocks in the backend. So all those builders have reinvented the wheel multiple times, supporting a very heavy, bloated, complicated code base, only to be able to work around the problem of adding blocks in the interface. So that's pretty much what Gutenberg is trying to solve right now. With Gutenberg, you may have editable blocks in the backend, which would let you create, again, columns and rows and design new blocks and kind of embed images in some uh, decent manner. And they did that as a pretty much Lego, right? I'm not saying it's a bad thing in general, right? You can still um, pretty much use the same layout and just say, I need one, again, full height, text area box, and I'm going to do whatever I want with it. But whenever you want to do something else, like a call to action, like an RSS feed in the middle, like, uh, you know, related posts in the middle of the post or something like that, it's going to be much easier. Right now, if you want to edit existing content on the page, again, uh, you're either going to use meta boxes, which are going to be hard coded in your content, right? You have subforms under the text area, you can fill them out and then the developer has to decide on where are those boxes showing up into specific posts, which isn't really ideal. It's far from ideal to be honest. And still someone needs to build those meta boxes or you need to use something like advanced custom fields to make it work. It's usually both things at the same time. Or you can use again a widgetized area, which isn't truly flexible and you can't have an you know um, infinite amount of widgets to maintain. Just the user interface for that is very cumbersome. It's not expected to have one widget per every page you have, right? It's just the interface doesn't really expect you to do that. So it, it gets a bit trickier. Or you can use short codes. Short codes are those snippets with the square brackets, which are injecting dynamic code within a post. But it's really easy to break this. It's really hard for non-technical people to understand this. Again, it's really easy to omit, uh, you know, a bracket here and there. So again, it's not error prone by uh, any means. So Gutenberg uh, aims to solve all those problems by letting you create a post comprised of specific blocks. Now, those blocks can be reusable. Again, something that you can have with the existing WordPress layout. By reusable, I mean you can design a block that's always related posts and it always has a call to action at the bottom, um, you know, several, like a query with several posts on top, a title, image on the left, text on the right, whatever it is, and you can save it as a block template, which is something that you can reuse further on in other blog posts, which is extremely cool. And again, you can inject it anywhere across the page. Again, something very valuable. Uh, if you don't like it, again, you can still use the classic editor, which is super helpful. But more, more importantly, again, Gutenberg is designing the framework that helps other visual builders create additional user experience, additional user interface, additional features by blocks building upon Gutenberg. Gutenberg is fairly mod modern. It supports several different front-end frameworks as well, which is very welcoming for the front-end community to actually join the WordPress world and start building dynamic functionality on top of WordPress. And another thing that I truly like is Gutenberg allows you to store data in other sources outside of the traditional WordPress database. Now, normally, the way you store data with WordPress is in the post meta table in the MySQL database. Now, with Gutenberg, you can actually extract that to additional snippets and it's going to be uh, pretty much supported out of the box. So then again, you have multiple uh, kind of best case scenarios and you have various ways to start building more complicated user interface with Gutenberg. Now it's not going to work perfectly at, st at first because you simply don't have enough types of blogs for galleries and shortcuts and uh, slideshows and thumbnails and the cordons and whatnot. So those are going to be work in progress and themes are still going to work upon adding those separately. But overall, Gutenberg is an excellent addition to WordPress. It allows for building a more streamlined, faster, more reliable, more editable interface in WordPress. And we're all looking forward to getting Gutenberg deployed on production sites over the next month or two.